What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green, and it has been a minute since I have introduced myself this way. I am an international photographer specializing in weddings and portraiture. And today we are here to talk about the release of my Lightroom preset pack. Now, I'm not doing this the way that creators generally do it, which is I take you to Lightroom and I show you how the presets work. We will be doing that, but I want to give back to you guys, and I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my Lightroom preset sets more specifically how I made one of my favorite presets in this preset pack the recipe is in the description down below as well as a link to my store containing these Lightroom presets as always I'd be very appreciative if after watching this video you did decide to buy them but without further ado let's get right into it All right guys, here we are in Adobe Lightroom. And the first thing I want you guys to know off the bat is that none of the photos in this library are mine except for the ones I have highlighted here. And that's because I want you guys to see that my presets work on any camera from many different photographers. So you won't be in one of those situations where you buy a preset pack that worked in the photos but didn't work on yours. So without further ado, let's get into what I really want to give you, which is how do I make these Lightroom presets? Today, I'm gonna to give you one of my favorites, which is Explorer X. The reason why I like Explorer X is because it's my editorial take on this world of adventure photography that we've gotten into. Whether it be elopements, the adventure engagement sessions, or being an adventure influencer, I love the grittiness that this preset brings out, and so I wanted to give that to you guys. Now, as I said, all of the settings for this are going to be in the description down below, but I'm gonna show you my trade secrets on how I did that and then discuss the settings with you. So my two trade secrets when it comes to creating a Lightroom preset are going to be our profile, and it's going to be our camera calibration, right? Let's take away this preset real quick and talk about profile. When we have profiles here, we can click on this little notch here and we have a whole bunch of different ones. Don't ask me why, I love to sit around in the modern section. Now off the bat, these are kind of like, ugh, I'm not so sure, but you can see modern three is what I chose for this one. Now I'm gonna break down like all these different aspects of the image that made it come together so you can see what happens when it's just on the image alone and why you kind of need to holistically go through all those panels and dial it in for your specific taste based off of the inspiration that you have in mind, right? So that's just the image profile there. The next step that we have when it comes to this is going to be the camera calibration. And if I get rid of the camera calibration, boom, we have a green mess. Now, in simplest terms to explain to you guys what's going on, we are affecting with a raw file the Bayer data of the sensor, the individual red pixels, green pixels, and blue pixels that make up the Bayer of our camera sensor. Now, this can be a whole class within and of itself and also a class on color theory as well, which is what's happening here. So the best way to get used to this, and my advice to you after doing this for almost 10 years, is to go ahead and practice a lot. Understand what's happening here. Let's just go ahead and look at again what's happening. Keep in mind these, these data points. Let's go ahead and look at what's happening before we actually add in any of our other adjustments. So we're gonna reset this image. And I'm gonna go 44 because that's where that was. And I'm shifting the red pixels now on the Bayer. And then it's gonna mix with my adjustments to the green pixels. And then it's gonna mix with my adjustments to the blue pixels, moving them away from their neutrals to a more cyan point. And this is actually minus 57. And then I increase this by 32 and that saturation down there. You can also increase the saturation. You see what's going on here. As we increase the saturation, we're affecting those certain parts. This was color grading before we had a color grading established. And this is kind of the basis of the old school teal and orange presets. And then I dialed it back a lot throughout the process. So you see we have this aspect going on. And then when we couple it with this aspect now, you see we have a different image. Now there's some other things going on in this preset as well. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about them a little bit and why you would use each panel. So we basically have this foundation, but this is the preset. 
And so what I have going on here are my basic primary adjustments. This is what I'm going to do to just really dial in the look that I want, which is why I'm pretty much able most of the time to adjust it with just simple temperature adjustments and exposure adjustments. I leave these open on every preset so you guys can go and do that as well. So I'm adjusting my highlights to my liking, my shadows to our liking, and let's just see what each one does. Always just go through and move your sliders and figure out what's going on with each slider, especially if you're not familiar with Lightroom. Now, I think one of the biggest misconceptions with film is that it has to be very soft and that it has to be very faded. And that's not necessarily true with any film that you'll actually ever shoot in camera. The only thing I do when it comes to the softness of an image, when it comes to film, unless it's stylistic, like I'm trying to emulate a pro mist filter, is I'm just gonna bring down the clarity about 10. That's it, it just takes off some of the digital edge of an image. And I actually generally have more of a contrasty film curve here. You can see here when I'm using my parametric film curve that I'm actually adding um, density to these darker areas to make them appear darker, because without that, boom, it's super bright. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to have some of that adventure vibe to it, that contrast that makes the subject or the lighter mid-tones, which is generally skin, stand out. And the same thing here, just going ahead with our regular exposure point curve, just bringing down the very low end and letting that gradually fade in up until we get to about the highlights um, away from the mid-tone highlights. I added nothing to the color curves, but the color curves are very straightforward. You have the color of the curve, and if you push that curve up, you're going to add in that color, and if you bring it down, you add in the complementary color. That's all for color theory. It's just the same way if you ever need to cheat, you have your color wheel right here so that you can see the opposite colors on this color wheel. And that's basically what's happening here. You're taking your color wheel, if you know how to use that in Lightroom, and you're putting it on a curve. And then I make the other finite adjustments in here to just get the colors where I want them to be. But for the rest of this video, we're just gonna be staying in this basic panel because I want you guys to see how straightforward these presets are. When I add on Fuji X Cool, I'm simply gonna go ahead and boost up the exposure and look how beautiful that skin tone is. As I said, skin tones are a priority with my preset pack. And if you get a photo where you add one of my presets and it looks crazy, for example, like this image, well, 5200 for a white balance is very, very cool when you're shooting against shadows and golden hour against a lot of green. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna warm that up and watch our image come to life. Watch those skin tones come to life. Look how pretty that is. Look at how this just changed into a completely different image. This is my signature editorial bright and airy style based off of what it's really like to shoot these films. This is a similar result you would get with Pro 400H. I created Pro 400H cool for my people of color though. I always want to maintain the integrity in the skin tones. You see I have my Fuji X preset here, but Fuji X cool keeps the people of color skin tone in mind. If you are black, I'm speaking to you. This is the go-to preset. Or if you shoot people of color, this will be the go-to preset in my preset pack. Now I also have my Portra out here for my Kodak lovers. And it's the same thing. We're simply gonna go ahead and push up the exposure and then we're gonna go ahead and dial it in with just a little bit of a temperature adjustment. And I might even bring in a little bit of green to just soften up how red she was. And you see, again, beautiful skin tones. A specialty variety of this is going to be Portrait X Soft. And the reason I did this is because when we shoot in contrasty situations like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up and balance the skin out, with just a little bit of green. Look what's happening to her face. So I created the soft as kind of like a pro mist version. Look at that difference right there. Hard, soft. And look at the glow that she has around her. I really liked that look. I don't know what drew me to that look, but it gave me this very, very airy vibe. It took the organic level in the image feel and just did something different to it. And so even when I use it here, you see how we have a rim light on her from the sun? When I go ahead and boost up this exposure and add Portra Soft, and again, we just balance with that temperature slider, just like that. And yeah, actually, I'm gonna leave that there, and I'm just gonna add a look right about there. Look at how soft that image is before and after. Beautiful imagery across the board, and you see how quick we're going through this, and that's exactly how my presets are designed. Even when we're shooting in harsh light, we're still getting very quick and consistent results. If you're not a fan of the high contrast look, as I said, these presets are super easy to dial in. I'm gonna raise the exposure, 
to where I like her skin tone. I'm like, cool, I'm gonna leave her skin tone right there. And I'm just gonna bring up the shadows. I'm gonna bring up the blacks. And I'm gonna bring it down. Maybe add in just a little bit of magenta to solidify her skin tone. And that is how simple it is to customize a look. Even if I did Fuji X Cool, look at how contrasty this is. But once I dial it in with the temperature and tint adjustments, the appropriate ones, I can go ahead and adjust these basic panel settings, which are very straightforward, and then readjust my exposure until I get an image that I like. And you see, that's a completely different image right there. We have flown through all of these photos, and that's what I want you guys to have when we're editing something like a wedding. I want it to be simple and straightforward for you guys. I don't want you spending a long time calling and editing photos. I want it to be very simple off the bat for you guys. And the less time that we are spending behind the computer, and the more time we're spending getting those consistent and quick results, the more time we're able to spend with our families and do other things we like, for example, shooting we're going to be able to shoot and that is my whole goal here and so again you can see as we're going through this library rather quickly i should say but as we're going through this library we are getting very consistent results across the board again we see this harsh light here i already know which preset i'm gonna like off the bat i'm just gonna go ahead and dial that in and i'm moving from photo to photo we already have explorer x on this one so we're gonna move here, Fuji X Cool. It's always a go-to for me. I have to say this is my favorite Lightroom preset, hands down. And again, these photos are all from different photographers, so we are absolutely just flying. She's a little red here, and now she's gonna be a little bit more yellow. Many different options with this image here. I'm gonna go ahead and use Fuji X Cool. Again, it's always my favorite when we have more melanated subjects. And uh, I'm gonna pull out some of the magenta in her skin this time. I'm actually gonna stand right about there. Maybe I'll pull it back a little bit cooler. Nope, her highlights get too cool. So I'm gonna stand right about there before and after. It just brought out richness into her skin tones and I love that. And these last two photos here, Fuji X Cool looks really good on this one. I already know this because I went through them and then I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, we could do any one here. We could do Fuji X Cool again. We could do the portrait one if you want to, make that a little bit cooler right here. I knew this one was gonna be black and white. Just look at how it adds that vintage vibe to it. Look at how it adds that vintage vibe. I'm just gonna to tone down a little bit on the grain right here. I was just flying through trying to prove a point that I completely forgot. So when we look across the board here, we see a very, very cohesive and consistent look to all the images. And that's what really takes our portfolios to the next level. So again, the pros of my preset pack are going to be first and foremost consistency when it comes to our portfolio, because that makes us money, that builds confidence with our clients, our skin tones, because no one wants to look bad in photos and skin tones are such a priority, especially when it comes to getting published and then also saving time from behind the computer, getting through your albums quicker so that you can spend more time doing what you love, being with your family, traveling, or shooting. As you guys can see, these presets have a very editorial look. These are designed off of my inspiration of film, and yes, there is a little bit of creative flair in there, but overall, they're designed to give you a consistent look to your portfolio, as well as be very simple and quick to use with simple temperature and exposure adjustments. So I hope you guys like them. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the description down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Again, a link is up in the top corner, as well as in the description down below. Please be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. A link is in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.